Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the media speaks which, with what was promised. Of course, the massive Fukushima update. Um, I'm very thankful. I've been getting a lot of traffic on my site, which is you guys. Uh, the uh, live web streaming. Um, hello, live viewers. Um, that's good. I'm, I don't go anywhere. Um, if you're seeing this and it's not live, that camera, the one I'm pointing to, is high def. It takes a little while for YouTube to render it, which is why I do two, two different ways. Um, but the, the higher def one, if you're seeing this later, you may want to go to themediaspeaks.com and exact same show in a high def there. But otherwise, I mean, if you don't mind a close-up shot of my nose, then I don't mind you having one. Um, guys, going to get into it. Independent.co.uk. Um, I like to bring these Fukushima updates into the world that you and I live in. Because I think one of the things people are under the false assumption of is that it doesn't affect us here in the here and now. And uh, that since this has happened before, of course, it could never happen again. That sadly isn't true. I've pointed it out on this show. It's a matter of mathematical fact. If the uh, a certain if the wrong dams were to break in uh, America, and I think it's the uh, southern states, it would the uh, the likelihood of a meltdown was a hundred percent. I don't remember what the name of the uh, the uh, plant was, but look it up. The statistic is easy to find. Ukraine crisis exclusive. U.S. and Europe planning to cut off Russia's gas supply. So why am I working this into a Fukushima update? Britain is drawing up plans with the U.S. and other European countries to disarm the threat of President Vladimir Putin using Russian gas and oil supplies as a weapon against Ukraine and its Eastern European neighbors. Next month, David Cameron and other G and other G7 leaders are expected to sign off on an emergency response plan to assist the Ukraine this winter if Russia restricts gas supplies. At the same time, G7 energy ministers this week agreed a, a, on a plan to eliminate Europe's reliance on Russian oil and gas over the longer term and prevent energy security being used as a political bargaining chip by the Kremlin. Russia currently supplies around 30% of the, all the gas consumed within Europe and more than 50% of all the gas used in the Ukraine. In 2006, when the Russian state-controlled energy producer Gazprom turned off supplies through its Ukrainian pipeline, Austria, France, Germany, Hungary, Italy, and Poland reported gas pressure in their pipelines fell by 30%. With only a small fraction of the gas used by the UK that comes from Russia, any restriction in supply will have a dramatic impact on prices. The reason that I'm incorporating this in here is at the same time, it says that the EU will invest in new pipelines to move gas from west to east and increase supply routes from North Africa. Japan is also understood to be prepared to restart some of its nuclear power plants that were mothballed in the wake of the Fukushima disaster. Japan is now one of the largest importers of LNG, which has pushed up prices to record levels. How many people, I know for sure Helen Caldicott has said this, they are going to look for any excuse that they can possibly find to rope us once again into uh, having nuke plants running in Japan. How are they doing it? Well, now they're going to use the Ukraine disaster. The point here is, Japan, the last time I checked, was in fact still islands. Still created by earthquakes. Still in an earthquake zone. We've learned nothing from Fukushima. They want to restart the nuclear power plants in Japan for the good of the Ukraine. <sighs> Makes me nauseous to even report on this, people. Yeah, I'm, it's the hardest part about doing these is nobody seems to hear the fact, which is not only is man not warming the planet, but even if we were, the answer is not to give ourselves uh, energy 
by creating toxins that last for millions upon millions of years. Uh, which plutonium or uranium element isn't it? It's 417 million years or something like that. That's just the half-life. That's what it takes for it to decay by half. It poisons you and me and the ground and the earth and the water and all the animals. All, you know, pretty much for all of eternity when you really think about it. This is from Infowars.com. San Francisco local news claims there is no Fukushima radiation on the West Coast. Now, before I get into the story, why do you tune into the correct views? Because you want these things explained to you. One of the ways to do this is to test for nuclear elements that you know are not likely to show up. Another way to do this is to raise the level of what's considered acceptable. And again, Dr. Chris Busby, Dr. Helen Caldicott, they've all warned us that there is no safe level of radiation. Sometimes you have to wonder how much people get paid to read lies off of a cue card to the American public. CBS KPIX 5 went on record recently to tell everyone concerned about radiation levels floating to the North American West Coast that experts have tested kelp levels and found absolutely no radiation. Oh, and the people have nothing to be concerned about. The experts that they refer to are running a program called Kelp Watch. Kelp Watch 2014, and there's links for all of this, is a project that uses coastal kelp beds as detectors of radioactive seawater arriving from Fukushima via the North Pacific Current. It is an effort led by Stephen Manley, a marine biology professor at California State University, Long Beach, and a Kay Vetter head of the Applied Nuclear Physics at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, it's called the Berkeley Lab, and a nuclear engineering professor at the University of California, Berkeley. While these scientists sound credible, there are other reports coming in from different agencies that tell a different story, and we've reported them on here frequently, have we not? It is interesting, especially considering that no federal agency is currently measuring levels at all or at least they aren't tell us, telling us about it, and a group of rogue scientists are saying that around this month, the first wave of detectable radiation from Fukushima should be hitting the West Coast. Ken Busler, chemical oceanographer from the Woods Hole Ocean Oceanographic Institution, says, I'm not trying to be an alarmist. We can make predictions, we can do models, but unless you have results, how do you know that it's safe? Well, let me tell you one thing already. The first part of that, um, the federal, no federal agency is currently measuring levels at all. And I was talking about this at Bilderberg when I went in 2012. I don't care what side of the political uh, spectrum you're on here. It is a matter of fact that the Obama administration is not testing any of the food on a federal level that comes in or goes out of the, or comes into the country from Fukushima. The milk the uh, mushrooms, the whatever you're eating, especially anything that comes from California, is getting juiced. And these people are making it worse by hiding the information and coming up with sketchy information. So I'm going to go on with this. The samples used by KelpWatch 2014 were taken from specimens primarily collected from February 24th through March 14th. Is it possible that these kelp samples have not yet accumulated radiation, or we are just safe, as the experts suggest? Furthermore, the report presented recently at a conference at the American Geophysical Union's Ocean Sciences section showed that some cesium-134, it's deadly, has already arrived in Canada, in the Gulf of Alaska area. Radioactive cesium has varying half-lives from 2.06 years to 2.3 million years. In 2.3 million years, it will have decayed by half. It will have quit giving heart disease and cancer and deformities by half. It is also possible that the radiation will show up in things besides sea kelp, such as larger marine animals. Look at some of Mikhail Phelan's work on that. Land animals and air and soil samples. Some foods even have low levels of naturally occurring radiation, but low levels of radiation are now being found in milk from the West Coast. And there's a link for that. We will get to it in a moment. 
don't drink copious amounts of milk. Um, I've, I used to drink milk every single day. Now, I mean, that's not the case. Um, cheese, but not like I used to. Cheese used to be a snack food of mine. They've ruined that for us. That's why I do these, because it's one of the many reasons I'm angry. A nuclear engineer has also just reported that radiation levels are much higher in the plume headed our way from Fukushima, and other isotopes besides cesium are a concern. Well, we'll test for cesium. In a broadcast on NPR, Dan Madigan, an adjunct assistant professor at Stony Brook University, said the models that predict the spread across the Pacific Ocean reaching the eastern Pacific at some certain time is pretty much totally agreed upon, as is some amount of radioactive cesium and potentially other isotopes will cross the Pacific Ocean. The question is in the amounts. I want to point out that I am not saying that or suggesting that it won't necessarily be problematic at all. But so far, all of the information that's been put forth has suggested that I think a lot of people don't know. In many ways, this is a unique thing to happen to the Pacific Ocean and people aren't really sure what they'd measure. And an engineer um, from the Uni Union of Concerned Scientists speaks similarly on current concerns about radiation, the bleed from Fuku. That's true. I think that they're seeing, what we're seeing is a computer model assume that radiation particles are uniformly distributed into the air and water and therefore get transported across to U.S. shores. In reality, there are particles that are not broken up evenly. It's not like sugar dissolving in water. It's more like particles that are suspended in water. And also, these particles are in the air that cause local hot spots and high readings, much higher than the overall plume, which seems... To, a much more homogeneous or uniform mixing. The computer models are good, but they don't account for the hot spots that people sometimes detect. We went over last month that these hot spots, um, if you don't know, these you can't see them really. These little tiny specks of extreme radi radioactive potency. Um, the, some of the black guk that's all over Japan, Tokyo, that that is the core of one of the reactors. So. It doesn't get broken down in water. I just read it. It's in the water. It's in the fish. It's in the... Don't, if you're eating fish now, you might as well play Russian roulette. Just search Fukushima radiation on Natural Society to see countless new pieces outlining radiation's concerns involving Fukushima. Like what? Huffington Post. Hardly a, uh, a conservative paper, to say the least. Radiation in milk, low levels found in milk from the West Coast. But Sam, none of this Japan stuff matters, right? It's None of it's a big deal. June 4th. We're still talking about it. Um, again, th th this originally came out in 11, and it's just come up again. They got a link to the prior article. Japan's radioactive fallout is showing up in the milk of the West Coast. Not to worry, though, it turns out the traces of radioactivity are in many foods we eat and breathe. What they do is they get it in the milk, and then they tell you how safe it is. Because all of these major news networks are tied into the dairy industry, among other things. Um, Kellogg's. Do you think Kellogg's would be very happy if people stopped eating cereal because they didn't want to put milk on it? When... Telling people to not put milk on it is exactly what's going to save their lives. I, I choose to save lives. So I'm out here trying to let you know that these things matter and they're important. Avoid mushrooms. They, they soak up radiation like a sponge. Um, avoid seafood, particularly seafood from uh, the Pacific Ocean, even though there are some questions in the Atlantic Ocean due to the power plants that we have there. Thankfully, nothing like Fuku. Bentonite clay, uh, Giselle swears by that one. I use, uh, you want to hit at least 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. Calcium, uh, because strontium is a radioactive uh, calcium mimicker. And if your body is already full of calcium, it is less likely to take in strontium. Friends, i got a couple more stories to get to. I do want to remind you that Mike McLaughlin, you can find him at uh, Facebook.com is writing some of the most awesome short stories um, being written today. Poetry, you name it. He's writing it, and he's writing it well. And you know, what I'd like you to do, especially if you support this show, you want to help me, hit share. Hit subscribe. 
These things help me a lot. Donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny you give me goes to a better show. Go to Mike McLaughlin. Buy some of his stories. That's how it works, people. You, I'm not going to give you an advertiser on here that I don't believe in, but I bring people that I do believe in, and then I need you guys to support them. And you will like Mike McLaughlin's stories. You might also like mine. And if you go to um, the uh, Amazon.com or Kindle.com, search Sam DeGangi, Asleep Unknowing. It's a novel that I've written. And there's also a short story called The Lucky Leprechaun. Um, it's creepy. Guys, um, FukushimaDiary.com. Uh, i got two more stories to get to. Significant ratio of a sort of Japanese migratory bird has abnormalities in the tail feathers. Most were born in 2011. This matters not just because it's showing up in birds, which means, you know, they, they breathe the same air we do, they eat the same things we do, in some instances we eat them. But it's worse than that because birds, of course, fly great distances. If there's a speck of cesium on them and they die, it kills them. That cesium will remain in their body on the side of the road dead and it will poison you when you go by it. This is fact. This isn't just some re-hammering that I'm doing for the hell of it. So this matters for a couple of reasons. And again, if this sounds weird, it was originally written in Japanese. So sometimes when you bring things into a receptor language, as Hank Hanegraaff likes to say, it sometimes uh, doesn't flow well as a sentence. Dated May 24, 13.8% of a sort of Japanese migratory bird has abnormalities in the tail feathers, according to Yamashina Institute of Orth Ornithology, whose president is Fumahito Prince Akashino. The migratory bird is red reed bunting. 13.8%? If it was half that bad, what, we're looking at, at, at just under 7% of deformities as a possibility in people? We're on the higher end of the food chain, people. This is why I'm doing this. It's why I do these reports. The institution has been tracking the birds to investigate their ecology since 1961. However, since they found the abnormality in the tail feather in Niigata Prefecture on 10-24-2011, for the first time, they have found a similar ab ab abnormality in 17 observation points of 14 prefectures across Japan. In other words, it wasn't a fluke. The abnormality is the moth-eaten shaped lax and uneven length of tail feathers. By March 2012, 13.8% of the birds had abnormalities, and most of them were born in 2011 when the earthquake was. The Institute announced the reason is not identified, but there are possibilities of the effect of radioactive material and thyroid abnormality. What is that? That is thyroid cancer. That is what kills you. That is why these matters. Um, guys, I'm going to be doing the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. If you don't know what that is, once a month I send a Dunce Cap to the stupidest story I found in any given month. I've sent them to the FBI, I've sent them to uh, the Board of Education. As a matter of fact, if you, hearing this, do two things. Go to the Department of Education on Facebook and leave one message that said, why did you send back the correct views dunce cap? Let me know that you did it in my comment line and I will promote your favorite charity and donate five dollars to it. Uh, dunce cap of the month, it'll probably be done Thursday. Thursday. Uh, today is, of course, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, depending on how you want to look at it. And we are going to go to the dumb D of the day. Uh, Fukushima does, in fact, have a dumb D of the day. I, I mentioned this yesterday. And then the story that I had just didn't cover it very well, so I went to the great Fukushima diary and got it. Akita governor suddenly had nosebleed during a press conference. Again, written in Japanese, so it might not flow as well in English. And it shows this guy on here. Am I happy that he's sick? Do I like to see him showing signs of radioactive poisoning? No, I don't. The point is, these are the people that are lying to you, telling you how safe it is. And these are the people who themselves are poisoned because they didn't evacuate. Akita Governor Sataki and Nor Norihisha had a nosebleed suddenly during a press conference of 5-26-2014. He was, he was visiting Tokyo the previous day. But are you saying that the biggest city in the world needs to evacuate? Yes, I am. 
He treated it by himself and continued the press conference to state that he was a nut. He was just too excited yesterday. Oh, yeah. You're really... How many of you have seen me on this show pretty freaking excited? Okay. How many of you go to the... Check out Passing Time, the band, and we're pretty... I'm pretty excited. You don't see my no, nose bleeding. It is known that Chernobyl victims experience sudden and intense nosebleeds. Yeah, that's a sign of radioactive poisoning. Friends, that is the end of your two-part massive Fukushima update. Um, hit subscribe because I do Fukushima stuff all through the month, along with other news. Uh, Anti-nuclear anything, I'm on it. I've been on the uh, mess that is Iran's nuclear power plant. I have been on the mess that is the entire nuclear program in North Korea. I've been following it. So if you like the work that I do, please do subscribe. Hit share. Um, I mentioned it earlier. The correct views at Hotmail.com. You donate to the show and uh, you get a better show, which is what I'd like to give you. Thanks for tuning in, friends. Good night. God bless. I hear uh, Christelle zipping uh, into the room to kill it for us. So good night, friends.